So number three then from the 2010 higher maths paper two, circles question. First part, show a line is a tangent to a circle and find where it contacts. And secondly, find the equation of some related circle. Well, first part A, show it's a tangent and the second part, find the point of contact. We normally do that in one go anyway. So I've given them names. So the technique will be substitute them. A line geometrically will be a tangent to a circle if it hits it at only one point. By equations, the solution to the system of equations should give a pair of equal roots. Again, effectively meaning only one value of x will work. So I'm going to substitute. Substitute 1 in 2, meaning wherever I see y, I'll replace it with a substitution 3 minus x. So what have we got? Well, that's x squared. Y, 3 minus x there. 14x plus 4y, 3 minus x. Minus 19 should equal 0. Might need a wee bit more room to expand the brackets. So that's x squared. Square the bracket. Simple pattern. Square the first. 3 squared is 9. Square the last. Always positive. That's an x squared. Twice the product. The product is negative 3x, doubled negative 6x, plus 14x, plus 4 threes are 12, minus 4x's, minus the 19. Are we going to get in there before we hit the snowman? Yes, we did. Tidy it up into a quadratic. That's two lots of x squared. That's minus 10 plus 14 is plus four lots of x. That's where we're all losing the place. 9 minus 10 was the other number. Away from the 12 means plus 2 equals 0. Now, how do you show that it's a tangent? Well, there's two ways you could proceed. You could factorise it to show there's only one solution, or you could use the discriminant. The only thing about using the discriminant is it tends to be a, a sort of end in itself. You work out the discriminant, and then you would say, oh, I'll just do it. You would say, well, what's b squared minus 4ac? Not that I would do it this way. Well, b squared minus 4ac would be 4 squared minus 4 times 2 times 2, which is 16 minus 16, which equals 0. And then you would say that means that you've got a pair of equal roots, which means that, and you have to finish it off, of course, with the line is a tangent. But now you've got to find the point of contact anyway. So there's not really any point doing it that particular way. Since you're aiming for x, you might as well just carry on with the factorisation. Now, for the factorisation, there's a common factor. Now, there's a difference between an expression and an equation. I've seen this so many times elsewhere. Saying, oh, you can't, of course you can divide by 2. Well, you can't divide out the 2. You can't divide 2 out of an expression, no. And if I want to maintain that expression for something later on, like when you're doing a derivative. So I've got this derivative, and I want to find the stationary points. I would keep the 2 in there because I might want to evaluate this side, treating it just as an expression. But as far as an equation is concerned, you can take the 2 out. If you're scared, then just leave it there. x squared plus 2x plus 1 equals 0. There's no need for that to be there. So that's 2 times... Oops, there's no point doing that, of course, because you know, by the nature of the question, the two brackets must be the same. So it must be a square, and it is. x plus 1 equals 0. Totally redundant. Leave it in if you want. And the statement would be, and there's a variety of things you could put down. You could say, only one solution, so line is a tangent. Equal roots, so line is a tangent. I think I'll put down the equal roots. Equal roots which means line 1 is a tangent to circle 2. Because there's a mark for the statement. And then just finish it off. x would equal negative 1. And then the second part just follows on naturally from that. So that means y will be putting x equals negative 1 back into the equation. <clears throat> so you just put negative 1 in. Ah, not there. Put it into the simple 1 y equals 3, take away negative 1, so y equals 4, which means that p is the point, negative 1, 4. 
Now you could argue if you state the two parts, and I think it allows you to do this in the marking scheme, then you have found the coordinates, but I still think you should actually state it quite explicitly like this. P is the point, negative one, four. Now part B, relative to a suitable set of axes, okay, this diagram shows the same circle from part A with a second smaller circle centred C. That line is a common tangent to them both, and the radius of the larger circle is three times the radius of the smaller circle. What's the equation of the smaller circle for six marks? Well, several things you can do. You probably haven't got the diagram down so that I'd rather call that C1, C2, but they're calling that C, so I'll call that something else. Maybe I'll call that N. So for this one, from that equation, what, are, what is the centre of this big circle? Well, it just comes from these two. You don't need to bother with your A's and B's and B's and Q's and F's and G's or whatever it is you want to use. It's simply those numbers, when you squared the brackets, got doubled, so it'll be half of those with the opposite sign. So it's negative 7, negative 2. Now there's a couple of ways of actually getting the radius of this second circle. You don't actually need to get the radius of the larger circle to find the radius of the smaller one. Because the way that will find the centre of the smaller one will also tell me its radius. The simplest way to do that would be to realise they lie in a line at right angles, because it's a common tangent, and whatever the displacement is to get from N to P, since that's three times this one, I can then work out the displacement it takes, that is how many along, how many up, to get from P to C. I know all the points, I've got them here. N is the point neg negative 7, 2. P is the point negative 1, 4. That means the displacement from N to P will be, I think I'll just write it down this way, from negative 7 to negative 1 is 6 along, from negative 2 up to 4 up is 6 up. That's the displacement. That's the proper term from moving from one place to another. I think in the marking scheme, you look at it, it calls it something like stepping out. And if that's the displacement, that means that since PC is one third of it, that means that PC is going to be one third of six, six, which is two, two. Now this two, two is what's going to give you both the center of that small circle and its radius. So for the center of the smaller circle, I'll just put this down now, smaller circle, the center is going to be, well starting from P, which is negative 1, 4, to get to the point C, I use the displacement 2, 2, so I add 2 to both of those, that means the center of that circle is going to be 1, 6, and also from the displacement, the radius squared of that circle will be the displacement 2 squared plus 2 squared, which equals 4 and 4, which is 8. And that's all I really want to know. I don't want to know the radius, because I'm just going to use the formula. So if the equation of a circle is x minus a squared, and y minus b squared equals r squared, you just slot that all in. x minus 1 squared y minus 6 squared equals, and the square of it is 8. There we go. Now I think because you're finding this displacement, that was by far the simplest way of getting the radius of that smaller circle. You'd already used your factor of 3 here. If you didn't do it that way, you might have found the radius of the larger circle by using the formula, which effectively just comes down to Square the centre, so that would be a 49 plus a 4. Subtract the number at the end, so it'll be take away negative 19, so it'll be plus 19, which then comes to the square root of 72. You then have to say that's 2 times 36, so that's 6 root 2. I didn't mean squared there, because I've got the square root, which means that the radius of the smaller circle will be 1 third of 6 root 2, which is 2 root 2. And then you would have to square it to get 4 times 2, which is 8. It's a much longer way. Do it if you like. And if you were in the mood for doing things the long way, 
instead of just using displacement, stepping out, to go from P to C, you could have used the section formula to find C by considering this line here. You've got a line with the points N, P, and C, where that's 3 times that, so that P cuts that in the ratio of 3 to 1. However, to find C, C would be a point outside the line. It's dividing the line NP externally. That's an external point of division. Not sure that's mentioned very often in the higher anymore. So effectively, if C is the point of division and it's external, that means it's four steps to get to it, and then negative one steps to get to the end point P. And using the section formula, C would be adding the two parts together, four forward, one back is a third of the four leading from the N would be multiplying the P, but it'd be minus one times the N. So that would be one third of four times, now what's P? Where are you? Negative one, four, take away, what's N? Negative seven, negative two. So that's one third of negative four plus seven is three, 16 plus 2 is 18, and there you are, that comes to 1, 6. Seize the point, 1, 6. But of course you wouldn't do that, you would just use displacement, which effectively, yes, just means stepping out, counting the boxes.